Hi, thank you for tuning in and I'm excited to be here and thank you Figma for working so hard to organize and bring this event to all of you. And I believe we haven't quite met yet. Hi, I'm Pavi. I was originally born in Colombo, Sri Lanka and my parents brought me to Canada at when I was about eight months. And this is a picture of me with my grandma in Sri Lanka. Aren't grandmas the best? I live with my family and have an adorable dog named Benji. An interesting fact, I used to be a biochemist and I pivoted into UX design after hitting a major point of frustration in my career. And I haven't really looked back since. I've previously worked at companies including Capital One and Shopify. And I'm currently a senior product designer at Odd Zero. When I'm away from work, I like to channel my passions into content creation on YouTube, blogs, talks such as this, and meetups to help motivate new creatives to achieve success on their own terms. So how many of you picked up random hobbies during the pandemic? I returned to something I often felt I didn't have enough time for, which was cooking. Yes, I got on that train. I'm looking at all of you expert bread makers out there. So I'm vegan. Uh, it was always fun for me to try and experiment with a lot of new recipes. And I often learned from my failed experiments and just kept trying until I got a texture or a flavor right. I recently tried to make vegan mayo, which became a diabolical disaster. I just couldn't get the consistency right. And I remember this tip I learned while I was making hummus, which was to get this smooth, creamy texture right, you would add ice water while you were blending the hummus. And I tried that with my vegan mayo, and it fixed it like magic. It became more of a substantial garlic dip by that time with all of the experimentation that I did. And you're probably wondering, Puvi, why are you telling us about your garlic dip? We want to know how to share work. But here I am sharing cooking experiments with everyone on Instagram, whether they're perfect or imperfect, and sharing work can feel like this too, like trying something, failing, experimenting. It can be like learning and trying a new recipe. So let's start with the why. Why do I want to share my work? When I first began my career as a designer, I encountered critiques and feedback reviews, and they terrified me. I would get so focused on trying to perfect everything before sharing. And I'd often work on designs in silos without sharing any progress and then present everything on this one day I'd have a critique. And team members never had enough time to ask all their questions and share their feedback. And I just assumed I did a solid job when I didn't get any feedback. And once I handed off all the designs, all the confusions and questions with design decisions began and I couldn't understand what I was doing wrong. And when I asked the team for feedback, they mentioned they didn't have the opportunity to share their concerns and thoughts. They wished they were more involved in the design decisions. So I worked with my product manager and design lead to set up weekly syncs, which allowed me to share my work regularly, even when I felt it wasn't ready. And this helped me get into sharing often and getting feedback regularly, and it made the uncomfortable more comfortable. I learned that sharing and presenting work wasn't just about showing off. It was more about inviting people into the design process, listening and communicating with each other. And that ended up helping me win involvement and move forward. And this quote from Presenting Design Work by Donna Spencer really summarized that learning for me. I always need the right ingredients to make my perfect recipe. So today, I'm going to be sharing my homemade recipe on how to share your work async. First ingredient is knowing the purpose. Before preparing my work or thinking about the purpose, I really pause to think about why I want to share and what I'm looking to get out of it. In this case, I wanted input from my team on two options that I was exploring. When I think about the purpose, you might want to share because you want to share that you're doing work and that you're making progress. But that reason might not be good enough. You may decide to share because you want to get feedback, but isn't that true for anything you'd want to share? Let's think a little bit harder. You may then decide to share in chunks for more specific feedback. 
there is a difference between sharing too much and sharing in chunks. And before I share, I usually take a step back and try to identify what the purpose of my sharing is. If I see that maybe I have three to four purposes, then I might be trying to share too much. Instead, I'll try to keep it focused to one chunk of work and I can cover the rest in another session. Another part to knowing your purpose is defining it using the 30, 60, 90 framework. And this really helped me structure where I was and what I was looking for in terms of feedback. So let's start with 30%. At this point, I'm sharing rough ideas and the feedback I'm looking for is if we're going in the right direction, are there any red flags I need to be aware of? And this is a real example of some dashboard wireframes I did roughly to collect feedback from my peers. At 60%, I've gone just a bit more deeper, and I'm now looking for feedback on post my 30%, and I'm looking for more feedback on visuals and ways to expand the concept. And this is an example of a mid-fidelity mock-up I had as one of the main options I was proposing for my dashboard. Now at 90%, the designs are almost ready for development, and I'm now seeking for more eagle eye feedback and looking for comments on those nitty gritty details and on copy. And you can see in this mockup, there's a lot more details and there's further refinement in comparison to 30% and the 60%. Now that we know the purpose, the next ingredient is understanding your audience. If it's a critique or I'm sharing to a particular Slack group, I usually look at who's going to be reviewing it and who's in that channel. Sometimes I'd CC people um, to share that way. I know what their roles are, what their context levels might be, and what I'm looking to get out of it without pigeonholing them. And most people will have varying levels of context. And I learned this the hard way when I first started sharing. I throw technical jargon and assume everyone knew what I was saying and it was common knowledge. Before I started to get more context-related questions instead of critical feedback that would have helped me move forward. Last but not least, the third ingredient is creating a structure. And having a structure really helped me share and present my work. I discovered over time that people found it easier to follow when I had a light deck to guide them. And once I did, I could reuse this framework whenever I shared my work. And more on this a little bit later. Now that I have all my ingredients, how am I going to combine this to create this perfect structure and communicate and receive the feedback I was looking for? When I first started gathering recipes and searching for ones I'd like to try, I came across several written recipes. And it was challenging to follow because I couldn't see the cook's technique. Instead, I started saving recipes going through my Instagram rabbit hole. And guess what? The format for all of them were videos. And that's when I understood the best way to learn how to make things for me was visually watching the method and looking at how they crafted something together. Those little details, it just made so much more sense. So step one. Use those failed experiments to your advantage. The first time I tried to share my work async, I created a video of my working progress using Loom and shared it every week. And I'd be doing this real estate tour of all the screens and explorations that I would have done. And then I'll stop to ask, if you have any feedback, let me know. And the result, no one responded. It didn't work. And I just kept doing it anyway, going through the motions every week, no feedback. If you've seen Boba Fett, spoiler alert, you might remember this quote from The Mandalorian uh, when he's trying to learn how to home the dark saber. Persistence without insight will lead to the same outcome. So I tried to analyze why I wasn't getting the feedback and responses that I was looking for. So I sat back and reviewed my video as the audience. And I realized I wasn't prompting people. I wasn't specific in asking for what I wanted. I wasn't sharing any context on the problem. The real estate tour was confusing, and people weren't sure how to react and respond. Which brings me to step two, show, don't tell. And here's a real example of the structure I use when I'm sharing my work async. I start off with introducing the project and what I'm going to be sharing. In this case, I had two options I wanted to share um, in terms of the flow. 
And with the intro, I'd also prime folks by letting them know where I'm at using the 30-60-90 framework that I had shared earlier. And at this point, I'm at 60% and I'm looking for more feedback on my visuals. I'd like to start to show the current state of things just to level out the playing field so everyone has the same context. And I'd follow this up by the jobs to be done of that particular screen and the end user questions. Now, I could present the two options I have using my mocks on Figma, clicking through it, and I knew in this case I was communicating to my product manager and developers who would be really curious to know how the interactions are going to work. And the reality is we're not using a mouse when we're interacting with our phone. We're often using our hands. To really get that authentic feel for how things worked, I mirrored my phone or my prototype onto my Figma mirror app on mobile and recorded myself using it to help communicate those interactions. And in this particular case, I used a second phone to help record me. Again, I'd follow this up by highlighting the pros and cons I've identified for each approach. And then I'll finally prompt for feedback. For feedback, I'd usually ask specific questions based on team roles. And in this case, I had tech-specific questions, which I've highlighted here. But I also would keep it open for other pieces of feedback. That way, I'm not pigeonholing people. It's also good to remind people of what you're not looking for. So this way, you can really help emphasize the focus of the feedback that you need. Now that I have my structure put together, how am I going to package this in an async way to which folks can interact and respond? A quick disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by Descript. I'm just a fan of their product. And I came across Descript while I was looking for specific tools uh, to help my video editing life a lot easier. And this tool was a godsend. Prior to recording myself, it really helped me to write down points uh, that I'd like to cover along the way. And I'd usually do an initial raw take. And Descript does converts my video uh, into a transcript, which makes it so much easier to go through and make those edits. So I'd edit out the pieces and see if there's anything I need to add to it further. Or if not, I have the option of using this as a script for another take. But I'd usually try to limit myself to one round of editing so I don't get lost in trying to perfect everything. And once I've done that, I would export the video and share it on Slack. On Slack, I found it helpful to share just a little bit of context and reiterate some of the points. And in this case, you can see that the structure I've outlined is starting off with the context, followed by the timeline, um, mentioning in which time I would like feedback. And I'd also follow this up with my personal rationale on why I would go with option one or option two. And I'd follow this up with sharing the video and the watch time. It also helps to share your recommendation. As designers, we hold most of the context. We've gone deep into our explorations, so we have an opinion. So putting your recommendation forward can really help drive a healthy conversation. When I often shared my work, my colleagues assumed I was a pro, that things came easy. I was never nervous, and I had a natural knack for presenting and sharing my work. But that's not true. It came from a lot of practice, experimentation, and finding a structure that worked for me. Building confidence when presenting was the most challenging task for me at the start. But as I mentioned, I had these four sinks, and it put me into the cycle of practice to help me develop that confidence when I was sharing my work. Rather than setting the goal to be right, I set the goal to be wrong. And ultimately, your team's working towards the same purpose as you, and we're here to support each other. And during my time, at Capital One, I adopted these four sinks, which allowed me to practice and gain that confidence. My favorite part with recipes is hearing about those special tips, just like adding ice water to hummus. So here are some of the tips that I have to give an extra spicy kick to your next show and tell. Know the purpose. Take a step back and write down the purpose of what you're sharing and sharing in chunks instead of sharing everything at once. Understanding your audience. Know who's going to be there. Understand what matters to them. And give people clear instructions on what you're looking for and what you're not looking for. Inform people of your scope. 
and use the 30-60-90 framework to help guide your conversation. Create a template. You can now download my ready-made template using that bit.ly link. And rather than having to spend time on crafting one every time, create one which works for you and continue iterating on it. And be conscious of time. People are busy and they have short attention spans. I usually try to keep my video just within five minutes so it doesn't feel like an overcommitment to folks who are watching. And set those boundaries. I limit myself to one round of editing, otherwise I can spend an entire day trying to edit a short video. Which brings me to my last and final tip. Be scrappy. Content trumps perfectionism, and it really helps to remind yourself of the goal of sharing and making things easy and accessible to your team. I'd like to end off by leaving you with this quote from Presenting de Design Work, which I felt encapsulated the reason for sharing work best. The reason we share our work is to get broader input. When we set, when we get outside our heads, we stand to learn more about the goals we set out to achieve. We set ourselves up to make the best possible product or service. Now, you're fully equipped for your next show and tell or async share, so go crush it. And feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. I'd like to thank my cheerleaders, friends, and my team back at Zero, And thank you to all of you, and thank you, Figma, for having me.